Okay, so a lot of people find Locke's arguments very convincing. Um, they're also rather hopeful in that they seem to allow for uh, life after the death of the body. Um, there's, I don't know if anybody watches a show called Black Mirror, but there's a famous episode of Black Mirror which suggests that our memories and consciousness can be uploaded into a computer after we die. And there's a whole love story in this one uh, of two people who you find out at the end are basically dead uh, and they're conscious, they're interacting in this computer that has uh, uploaded their consciousnesses. So this would be a kind of scientifically achieved immortality. Or as it says in the Stephen Law book, you can imagine giving people robot bodies that they could put the memories onto computer chips and then you know you would never break down or you could just repair various bits of you and you could carry on living. Um, however, there are critics of Locke's um, right from the word go. As you can imagine, here, this discussion was seen as very radical and a lot of people had a problem with it. Perhaps the most famous criticism of it, um, which is included, I've included at the end of the Locke piece, is by this Scottish philosopher called Thomas Reed. Uh, apparently he's not the first person to come up with this criticism, but he, he came up with a particularly good way of presenting this criticism. Uh, and I'm calling this the problem that memory is not transitive. Okay, transitivity, you might have learned from math class, is when a, um, well, basically, uh, if you have A is greater than B and B is greater than C, then you know that A is greater than C. This is uh, because greater than is transitive. Um, but memory doesn't work like this. And to illustrate this, he tells the story of uh, a man who, as a boy, did something bad in school, or maybe he didn't do anything bad, he was just flogged, which means beaten with a cane, because that's what schools are like in England. Um, actually, I, I was given the slipper when I was a kid. I was beaten with a, with a small slipper, uh, and uh, I imagine this was fairly uncommon even at the time it happened to me and it wasn't very painful, but so these things did happen. Um, so the kid does something wrong and is flogged for it in school. He grows up to become a young soldier who remembers the, uh, the flogging incident. So by Locke's consciousness theory, it looks like the young soldier is the same person as the boy because he has consciousness of it, or memory of it. Okay, and the young soldier does something brave and captures a, a banner in, in a battle or something. Then, he go, uh, because he do, he's a brave soldier, he gets promoted and promoted, and he becomes an old general. Here he is, old, he has to use a cane, thanks to my amazing artwork. And the old general remembers the uh, event of capturing the banner, he remembers this brave thing that he did as as a young soldier. So we've already established that the young soldier is the same person as the boy. And now we've established that the general is the same person as the soldier, because the general remembers being the soldier. Which, but because identity is transitive, if, um, if we have A, B, and C, we've established that A equals B because uh, B remembers being A. And we've established that B equals C, because C remembers being B. But the, the problem, so because um, identity is transitive, then obviously it has to be the case that A equals C. But, what's the, the, the catch? The old general does not remember being the boy, because he's so old he's forgotten uh, the incident of being flogged. So this is what Reed, um, Reed is saying when he says um, 
there is another consequence of this doctrine, which means Locke's uh, consciousness theory of personal identity, uh, which follows, though Mr. Locke probably did not see it, that a man may be, that is, uh, uh, because A equals B and B equals C, Locke's theory uh, by identity being transitive, that means that the general is the, the boy, and at the same time not be, because the general does not remember being the boy, the person that did a particular action. And that's a problem. Now, Locke has already, uh, as Reed says, Locke has already admitted that his theory has some strange implications, like if you genuinely forget that you did a horrible crime, then you're not guilty of it because you don't share consciousness with the person that did it and then therefore are not the person that did it. So Locke has already taken that on board and said, yeah, I accept that. It has some strange implications. But this is more than strange. This is an implication that shows that the theory doesn't work because you can't have a contradiction. Either the theory has to say that these are the same people or it has to say that they're not the same. But it can't do both. It can't say both that they are the same and that they're not the same. Uh, how do we get out of that? Well, there is an answer. It's not the answer Locke gave because Locke was dead, was long dead by this point, but it is an answer given by some people who want to save Locke's theory, that call themselves basically Lockeans. And this is essentially what um, Law calls the stream theory, and he gives the analogy of a rope. So what we have to say instead is that instead of saying in order for the general to be the boy, he has to directly remember being the boy, which is what Reed assumes, or we could adjust that theory and say in, um, it's enough for the general to remember being someone who remembers being the boy, and that's enough to make him the same as the boy. So instead of requiring that you have to have direct consciousness of, um, of a person in the past to be that person, you just have to remember being someone who remembers being that person. So there just have to be overlapping chains of memory that take you back to that person. Now, if this is possible, then uh, this allows that I am the same person as me age three. At the mo if we take Locke's theory as he presents it, it looks like I'm not the same person as me age three because I have no memories of being three. The, my earliest memories are, are of about age five. I have no memories of being three. Uh, does that mean I'm not the same person? Well, it looks like it on Locke's theory. But on this new theory, no, I could be the same person because although I don't remember being three, I do remember being five. And when I was five, I probably remembered being three. So by a series of links, that connects me back to that person without having to remember um, right now being three. And that actually seems like a, a better theory or a more sensible theory uh, because that allows someone who's starting to lose their memory to still be the same person throughout their life. You know, I've forgotten lots of things. People don't even remember the next day, most things, like uh, things that you do on a regular basis. You don't even retain the memory of that past like a few minutes afterwards. Like if you have the same drive to work, you won't remember a particular drive to work unless something strange happens. Does that mean that you're not the person that drove to work because you don't remember it? Well, on Locke's basic theory, it seems like that's the implication, but on this adjusted version of his theory, you don't have to say that because you remember being someone who did remember that drive to work. Now another problem is uh, it's slightly harder to explain. I call it the false memory problem, but uh, another way of putting it is that this um, Locke's theory is circular. So I'll explain the false memory part first and then explain why it's circular. Imagine, now, you've probably had this experience. Um, if you have brothers or sisters, 
and you'll get together with them and you'll say, remember when we did that and you did this? And the person will say, wait a minute, it was you who did that. And I say, no, 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 it was you who did that. And you, both, you have conflicting memories of something you did together of which one of you did a particular thing. I remember it being you who pushed the kid when he broke his arm. No, it was you who pushed the kid. And both of you think that you're right. You have memories of, of, uh, of the same event, but you can't both be right. One of you has a false memory. Um, according to Locke's theory, it looks like there cannot be any such thing as a false memory. Why? Because according to, and th as Reed as Reed presents Locke's theory, according to Locke's theory, what it is to be the same person as somebody in the past is to remember being them. So if I have a memory of, I don't know, doing something, suppose I have a memory of shooting JFK. Well, that seems to suggest that I am the person who shot JFK, even though I wasn't born then. Uh, I'm old, but not that old. Then, uh, it seems like that's a false memory. But according, but what is a false memory? A false memory is something that didn't happen to me. But at the same time in Locke's theory, I am who I remember being. So there cannot be a memory that I have that isn't me, because I am my memories. So that's sort of the circular. What uh, uh, I am a person, uh, that I remember being, and they are my memories. Uh, I am my memories, and one explains the other, that they are mine because they're memories that I have, but they're also my memories are me. I, I hope you get the point. It is harder to put into words than this uh, problem. Um, there's a way to respond to this. Uh, I don't want to get into that now. We'll get into that when we talk about Derek Parfit, who is a contemporary philosopher who thinks that Locke basically got it right. Uh, and the, the problems that people have with his theory can be um, fixed. Uh, but that is the second major criticism that uh, Reed brings up. Now, let's go on to talk about some of the criticisms that uh, Stephen Law brings up in his chapter. Uh, the first one of these is the possibility of duplication. So, let's present, um, yeah, actually a lot of these uh, issues can be illustrated nicely if we pretend that the transporters that you see in Star Trek are possible. These are uh, w things where essentially you get into a booth you press a button, uh, it goes wibbly-wobbly, you disappear, and then wibbly-wobbly you appear on the planet below. Or you can beam to different parts of the ship, depending on which Star Trek episode we're, we're talking about. So the way these things work, presumably, if they, did, if they were ever to exist, would be that there's two elements to the transporter. One element is it scans you completely. It scans you down to the subatomic level. And let's assume that we are material objects, so my memories are just uh, electrical activity in my brain. Everything about me can be duplicated, can be copied. So what the transporter does is it scans it, sends the information to another one, and, what, and then the second element of the transporter is it, it destroys this version of me. So it takes me apart atom by atom, just as on the other end, uh, something is like a 3D printer is building up a com an identical, qualitatively identical version of me. Now, this person has all of my memories and all of my consciousness, and as far as that person is concerned, it's me, because it has the same consciousness, it has the same memories. Uh, this looks like an instance where you have sameness of consciousness, even though you don't have sameness of substance, which Locke, of course, is okay with. He says you can have the same person, even though not made of the same stuff, because that happens to us during our lifetimes, that uh, I don't have, I'm not made of the same stuff as uh, me as a 
a five-year-old. I'm not made of uh, the same atoms. I'm made of all new atoms. Well, same thing has happened in this case, only a lot more sudden. But in both cases, what makes us the same person is that the, the, remain, the one that is now in a different place uh, remembers being the original. Okay, so let's imagine that's possible. Um, would you use it? It would be amazingly convenient. You could go anywhere in the world just at the touch of a button. Let's say it costs pennies to operate. Um, and, you know, it's great for the planet. We're not burning jet fuel. We're not doing any of, uh, of those things. And it actually costs about as much as, let's say, um, I don't know, running a microwave for 10 minutes. So it's remarkably cheap and energy efficient, and everybody is, re is requested to use them instead of planes and, and whatnot. And you can travel to the moon. You can travel to the moon instantaneously. So none of this time is wasted traveling. Looks like a great idea. Um, but imagine that it malfunctions. And I, press, I decide, you know, I'm in Flint, I go into the booth, I press the button, and I, I pick uh, Hawaii. But somehow it gets its wire across and it, it, it sends uh, me to Hawaii, but it also makes a version of me in, let's say, Paris. So I disappear in Flint, but at the same moment in Hawaii and Paris, two versions of me appear. What's the problem? The problem is they can't both be me. So let's say the original is A. And then there's B in um, Hawaii. This one's in Flint, I'm wanting to get the hell out. Uh, and C is in Paris. So the question is, which one so A has, is no longer there. A has been va vaporized. Is B the same person as A or is C the same person as A? Well, why not both? They both have equal claim to be the original. So why can't they both be the original? The answer is because if B is the same as A and C is the same as A, then it follows that B is the same as C. But that's not true. These are obviously two different people. How can you tell they're two different people? They could get into a fight. They could play tennis. They're two individuals. They don't share a consciousness. This one has no consciousness of this one. This one arrives in Paris not knowing about this one. They don't, they don't share a mind link or anything. This one is making memories that this one will never have and vice versa. So they're obviously not the same person. But if B is the same as A and C is the same as A, that implies they must be the same person. Well, so they can't, be, they can't both be the same person. All right, shall we say that just B is the same person? How about that? Well, but that seems totally arbitrary. Why do we say B is the same person when C has exactly the same claim to be uh, A as B does? Why do we say B is the same person as A because B remembers being A, but so does C. So anything you can say to justify saying that B is the same person as A, you can say to justify C is the same person as A. So in other words, we can't just say that one of them is the same as A and not the other one. So we can't say that they're both the original, and we can't say that just one of them is. What does that leave? It leaves neither. So, if duplication seems to be possible, then it looks like neither of the duplicates is the original. So what happened to the original? The original just ceased to exist, and these are two new people. That appears to be the implication. Um, but uh, as Locke's theory, or as the stream theory says, they are both um, the same person because both of them have consciousness of it. But that is contradictory. That is the same problem that this had. Uh, it's, it's producing a contradiction. So we have to alter the stream theory so that it says neither. And the way that Law does that is he says we replace the stream theory with the single stream theory. 
I don't want to go off the edge here, single stream. So basically the single stream theory says um, you are the same person as whatever you can chase, trace a chain of uh, memory to so long as there's no branching, so lo long as there's only one. And if there's more than one, then neither of them is. So it basically adds to the single stream no divisions possible. Okay, so problem solved. Well, no, because the single stream um, theory has its own problems. The, the thing that the single stream allows is that we can use a transporter and if only one of me survives, then that person is me. So if I, if I press the button and as normal, I disappear and a new person appears in Hawaii and there's no duplicates, then that is me. That's what the single stream theory says. It, uh, but then if uh, another one does appear, then this one isn't me. But that seems crazy. Why should whether or not this one is me depend on the existence of something that has nothing to do with this? For all I know, every time I press the button, there is a duplicate of me, and it hasn't been me. Uh, I haven't survived this every time I press the button, just because some other version of me is created that has nothing to do with me. And this is what Law is trying to say with the example of the duplication gun. Um, if what makes me the same person as, uh, what, what determines whether or not I am the same person as the original is whether or not another copy exists, that seems wrong. It seems like whether or not I am the same person as the original should depend on facts about me, not whether or not this totally independent person exists. So that is a strange implication of the single stream theory. Um, one more problem, and this is where the uh, single stream theory appears to lose ground to an old theory that Locke objected, along t Locke rejected a long time ago, which is the body theory. Uh, Locke rejected the body theory with the prince and the cobbler example. He says if, they, if we switch consciousnesses, then you, you go with your consciousness, not with your body. So what makes you you is not your body, it's your consciousness. But there is another thought experiment that appears to undermine that. And that is what Law is talking about at the end of the chapter. Um, and I'm going to give you a slightly different version of it. Imagine that you're using the transporter. So again, I go into the booth in Flint and I press the button and, and I say Hawaii. And remember, there are two parts to the transporter. There's the scanner and then there's the destroyer. So the scanner uh, takes all your information and sends it down the fiber optic cables to Hawaii. Uh, where it is given to a sort of 3D printer thing that creates a new version of you. Okay, that part works fine. So I push the button and it does it. And I have a little screen in my booth in Flint and I can see a version of me being made in Hawaii. And I said, wait a minute, I've never seen this before. Why have I never seen this before? And the answer is, normally at this point, I would have been destroyed. The original would have been destroyed just as you build the new one in Hawaii. But what isn't working in my particular one is the destruction unit. So it scans it, it sends the information to Hawaii, but it doesn't destroy the original. But then a little light comes on the screen and it says, destruction unit back online, commencing in five, four, three. And at this point, I don't feel happy. I think, oh shit. I'm about to die. I'm about to be destroyed. Uh, and suppose I break out of the booth. I realize, wait a minute, this guy in Hawaii who has no memory of this happening, that's not me. That's just a duplicate. Me is this person in Flint. And that's why I realize, wait a minute, every time anybody uses these things, they get killed. The original is the one who, who gets destroyed. And this is just an imposter 
who thinks it's the original, because now there's two of them. I know this is me, and that's not me. So what does that suggest? It suggests that your body is just as important as your consciousness, that you go where the original body is, and this person with the new body is not you. Um, that's the, uh, that's the transporter objection to any consciousness theory, that uh, actually consciousness is not sufficient, same consciousness is not sufficient for same person. So this seems to suggest that you need the body as well. Maybe consciousness is important, maybe consciousness is necessary, maybe I have to remember being someone to be that person, but maybe the body is necessary as well. I have to remember being that person and have the same body as them. So maybe if that's true, then that undermines Locke's uh, Prince and the Cobbler example. There you go, personal identity.